Freeman has just, children, but I don't know. You don't? Uh, am I thinking of Laura's? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Dancy. She Freeman. has some okay. children's Songs, music, too. But, yeah. So now I'm going to introduce Mr. Dennis Tardon. He's Yay. a dear friend, and he's working on a performance piece entitled On the Journey to Being My Most Authentic Self. And here is an excerpt. As I have shared with so many of you, I turned 70 this year. Officially a member of the Old Man Club. <laughs> and I was very trepidatious about joining this club because of all the publicity about getting old is not very positive. <laughs> Every single commercial that I see on television, everything that I see on a magazine, all says getting older is terrible. It's something to be avoided. We're going to figure out some way to get past it. We can beat this thing. <laughs> I didn't, I can't, whatever it is, I'm going to have to be here. But I'm an optimist. I was wired that way, not, it just happens to be the way I am. So I want to look on the bright side of things. What is positive about being 70 years old and older? What is it about aging and old manhood that is wonderful. Well, I no longer have to pretend I remember your name. <laughs> I can just say, what was it, dear? Did you, Patty, pe pe uh, pe pe could you tell me your name again? <laughs> and it's fine. I don't have to sit there in a meeting and go, I just went to pee. <laughs> Not that long ago, and I'm afraid you're going to be all concerned and thinking about what I'm doing, and you don't really care. But I don't have to care. I don't have to sit down and pretend that I am something other than I am, and that is such a relief. Finally, I can work toward learning and being my most authentic self. And it is a graceful, wonderful experience to do this. Now, there is certainly some opportunities for self-knowledge, one of which is getting up in the morning and reading the paper and always going past the obituaries <laughs> and seeing that there are, my goodness, a number of people younger than I am who are no longer going to be on this particular journey. <laughs> and as I have told you, as I have talked before about death and dying, my, my relationship with death has, well, when I was a kid, imagine this. My mother is taking me and putting me to bed and saying, let's do our prayer. <laughs> now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. And she would kiss me goodnight and go and turn out the light and close the door. And I, wait a minute. <laughs> if I should die, what does that mean? What? To a child, what does dying mean? And it terrified. I would lay there and I would go, oh, 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 because I didn't understand. We would have, when I was growing up in the 50s in South Texas, open casket funerals were very prevalent. Everyone had an open casket funeral. And before the services, everyone would come up to uh, go into the funeral parlor, and they'd be visiting, they'd be catching up. There was no, you know, that we still had party lines back then. Yeah. So they were, we were trying to catch up, and I'd be standing there and going, how can you all 
be so casual when there is a dead body <laughs> right over there. And I was just fascinated. I was fascinated. This was animated. I knew this person, and now he's not. What is that all about? Well, over the course of my life, I studied it. I studied about death and dying. I learned. I, I, I studied the Tibetan Book of the Dead. I did meditation. I studied Eastern religion. But it never really brought me to a space where I was really comfortable. But it did loosen the anxiety. But I never completely got there. And it wasn't until one day I am driving around, I'm driving around Austin, and I'm in my car, and I suddenly realize that the reason why I have this horrible anxiety is because I have over-identified with this body. I actually, I've been identified that this is Dennis. It's not Dennis. In my car, I know that I get out of my car. My car, my car is my vehicle. It's what takes me from one place to another, like my body. It hit me. I am occupying a 1948 Dennis. <laughs> it's a post-war classic. In beige. <laughs> Now the headliner's a little thin, <laughs> but the suspension is still good. I've had the emissions checked, <laughs> and the exhaust. <laughs> Everything seems to be functioning. I have, I have dings in the, in the uh, exterior. No problems with that. I still, my headlights are good. <laughs> now, I find that I need to make sure that whenever I get fuel, I put in good fuel into this vehicle, or I backfire. <laughs> And I know, and I know for sure, because sooner than later, there is going to come a time when I'm going to be exiting this 1948 Dennis. That whatever it is, it is this consciousness, whatever is carrying me forward, is no longer going to have a use for this vehicle. <clears throat> And when that happens, I want it to be, I want to do this gracefully. And I can see it in my mind as the 1948 Dennis slowly coasts to the curb. <laughs> and whatever the essence of who I am exits the vehicle, thanks it for this journey. And then there's a song that plays me off stage. Hmm. We'll meet again. <laughs> don't know where, don't know when, but we will meet again some sunny day. <laughs> Yeah, that's horrible that prayer yeah, was.